Have you ever wondered how your consciousness works? Or thought about what is this consciousness really about? What does it do? And how does it work in the human body? Not a lot of us understand about it though we have come a long way in technology ever since inception of mankind. And also to the flip side of the same coin, we have also not understood what quantum mechanics is. Is it just a coincidence? Because science begs to differ. Science says that not understanding quantum mechanics and consciousness is more than just a common coincidence. You see, because quantum mechanics is something which is used to describe even the tiniest objects in the universe from the atomic to subatomic particles. Now, because it is used to describe the tiniest objects which may not have importance to the common man, that is why quantum mechanics in so many ways can help understand the human consciousness from end to end. Now, there are many ancient philosophies that also say that even time is an illusion. Now, quantum mechanics more or less agrees with the same thing because there is a hope and there is a belief backed by certain theories that there is an objective world out there. That maybe, just maybe, whatever that we are seeing is just our perception of the real world and not the real world itself. We see different objects, we see different things, but maybe there is a true image beyond what we see with the naked eye. And that is what quantum mechanics tries to prove with the help of a study with light. Now, when we take a look at light, for many centuries, scientists have discussed and debated over the fact that light could be made up of particles. And a few scientists have said that light is made up of waves. But no one could come with a definitive conclusion that light is made up of only one certain entity. This was all an assumption until a certain gentleman named Thomas Young came with a path-breaking experiment known as the double slit experiment in 1801. Now in 1801, when he did this experiment, he did it with an empty box, a small empty cardboard box. Now we can do that experiment very simply. The experiment works something like this. You take a small empty box and you have a small holder where you place two narrow holes facing directly at the sun. So the sunlight has to hit directly and go through those two small holes. And then you place a screen seeker, something like that VR opening that we have so that we can look into the box at the side of the box. Now you place it directly under the sunlight. Now you tell me what would you normally see? There are two holes and when sun is directly hitting it, you would normally see two small dots at the end of the box, right? Because there are two holes. But that is not what exactly happened. There were a multitude of dots that, that was there at the bottom of the box when someone saw. Now, why does this happen? In reality, what we get are various dots at the bottom of the box with each dot spreading as it goes from side to side. And the weirder part was, as it goes from side to side, the color also changes and it causes some sort of rainbow effect. Now, why does this happen? Now, when there is one small hole and when light passes through it, it is very simple. You find one small dot at the bottom of the box. But to the flip side of the same coin, when there are two holes, when there are two holes, the thing that happens is something miraculous as those two holes interact with one another. It is the peaks of one hole interact with the peaks of the other and the troughs, which is the bottom of one hole, interact with the bottom of the other, which causes a constructive interference. So the light passes between one hole to another hole like a wave. And this is so amazing because it is like light cancels itself out from one hole onto another and thereby we get light. So in this whole thing, if the peaks of one hole interact with the troughs of another hole, then it becomes a destructive interference and we see no light at all. So it is very important that both holes get the sunlight at the same time for that to have a constructive interference and we get the multitude of dots that we get as it passes from side to side. 
Now yet there will be one more unanswered question as why the color changes. The color changes mainly because when we look at the sun we only see one color but the sun is actually made up of a variety of colors with different composition and different wavelengths and when that hits the two holes there are different colors as it goes from side to side and hence we get that rainbow effect. Now take this experiment alone. Take this experiment alone from quantum mechanics and let us now link that with consciousness. Whatever we see with one particular naked eye, we see that this is all that there is in this world. But in reality, when we look at it from a different perspective, we see that the entire world is just an illusory image of what it really is. It is like nature knows that we are looking through it in a different aspect and there is indeed an objective world out there and much like in one ancient Indian philosophy they say that Brahman in India is the most powerful thing in the universe the creator of the universe and they say that Brahman does not exist in time but time exists in Brahman this is a very sophisticated way of saying that time is an illusion in the same way, even here, in this double slit experiment, it is a very sophisticated way of saying that whatever we perceive is an illusion. I'm able to see a red object here. I'm able to see a blue object there. Yes, those colors are natural, but it is just a reflection of different colors that we see through the naked eye. And when we see this, we understand that the light passes through everything like waves and they concluded that yes indeed the light was made up of waves and there is one more theory for this there is one more small theory for this on how whatever we view is actually an illusion and in science a few scientists have come up with a theory called as solipsism now solipsism literally means believing that the self is all that exists in this entire world which is true which in many ways is true. A lot of ancient Indian philosophy, a lot of Greek mythology, everything agrees with the same concept. And even in the Bhagavad Gita, that is what they say, that the self is all that exists. And there is a scientific theory to it using solipsism. Now, this is in many ways related to our consciousness because the idea of solipsism, the idea of an objective world out there is inbuilt in our consciousness, which we are yet to realize. We view our consciousness much like how we view the light from one small slit. But when we view it with two narrow slits, we get to find the same thing as what we found in the double slit experiment. Now scientists say, now many scientists who believe that the soul is all that exists say that, that we are living in a participative universe. And we are not living in a universe where we can choose certain things. We choose certain things that we see, but we are not seeing the reality of the universe. This is something that even Plato has discussed using the Plato's use of forms. And also I would have mentioned the same thing in one of my cave videos, which you can see right here, that what we see is different from what actually exists. And that is why and that is why they say that every scientific study that is passed is not passed out of scientific theories, but out of one individual's personal works. That is what the theory solipsism believes. Now in quantum mechanics, with the help of this theory, they were able to define consciousness in so many ways that couldn't be defined before. And that is why they say that the consciousness already knows what is real and what is unreal and it discriminates the reality and illusion. It is just that we have to accept it, embrace it and follow our heart. Would you believe if I told you that this very scientific theory was told 5000 years ago by Krishna on the battlefield? Now in Bhagavad Gita too, it says the very same thing that consciousness is awareness of the presence. The present is very important because when you're aware about the present, you do two very important things that we normally don't do. We don't regret about the past, neither do we think too far ahead into the future. And that awareness about the present, what happens is you see the world for what it is and not how you perceive it to be. And that is what is said in this verse 
and that is what science agrees with various experiments over the course of time. So this is how our consciousness works. And that's a wrap for this particular episode. And as always, thank you for watching. And until the next time, it is goodbye.